Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's been a little while and I wanted to upload another video about Halloween before the event is inevitably over. Two things I want to mention before I get into this video, one of which is two Discord servers will be linked in the description. The main one uh, I'd like you to join is my personal server where you could talk to me about content or just get in touch with me for whatever reason. Additionally, I'll also be linking the official Miner's Haven Discord server in case you're just looking to talk to people about the game. As well, I will be linking this document. This is what Gary, Bruce, and I worked on in order to prepare for the video, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. Now, something I do want you to keep in mind is that at the end of the video, there will be some honorable mentions. Uh, I do encourage that you check that out, at least, because it does contain some info that's worth uh, hearing, so. Let's get into the video. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Alright, first off, this is the good tier. It kind of consists of items that are generally pretty good, and it, there are use cases for them in some point in the game. Alright guys, so this is the Phantom of Christmas Future. This is probably the best item to go for, objectively. It is really, really, really strong, and this is something that most endgame players use in their setup. It does a times five, and then for every Christmas ghost used before it, it doubles the multiplier. Pretty strong. I'd say it's definitely the best to go for. Everything else is somewhat skippable, but not entirely. Next off, we have the Cosmic Tower. It does need to be charged, I believe. However, the item does a one-time multiplier of times 35 as the ores are produced. So you activate it, then spawn in the ores, and they're 35 times stronger. It's pretty good. Uh, it's generally really easy to use, and it could be a really good help for early game. I don't really see the po uh, the point in making it end game viable right now, but I could imagine it at some point in the future. Now for the last item in this tier, we have Witch's Cauldron. It's been a fairly controversial item in the past. However, what it does is any ores that go into the cauldron are doubled, so it kind of duplicates them. Uh, and the drop is really a small ore, which is pretty good. But it also multiplies the ore value by times 15. So it's pretty good. You get double the ore, a times 15 multiplier, and they're probably going to be smaller than the original ore. It's not a guarantee, but it is, in most cases, it is a really small ore. It's something else just to use for, like, challenges or getting a high amount of money at a low life or something. But ultimately, it's not really applicable to endgame right now, so do with that what you will. Alright, next up, we have the next tier, which is mid. This consists of items that can have a use or aren't totally unbearable to use, but they're not like the greatest thing. It's not, it's not something you should ever immediately look at and be like, yeah, I need this in my setup. Also, I just turned down the music. It seems really loud on my end, and I'd rather you guys just deal with it being a little quiet. All right, so here we have the Eternal Overseer. I felt like putting this one right up in front for this tier because it is the most expensive gift, if I am correct. The only problem with this item is that it's essentially a worse version of the Cosmic Tower. Even the wiki kind of agrees that it's similar to that item. However, what it does is instead of multiplying an ore value by times 35 upon being dropped, it applies a times 15 multiplier to all ores almost immediately. However, the only thing is that it only applies that once the ore has changed in some way. It could be teleporting, the ore value changing. You just gotta change the ore in some way and it applies the upgrade. However, in order to activate it, like all of these items do, you do have to use granite to power it, which can be a little tricky. However, you can apply it at almost any life, I believe. It's just annoying. Not a terrible item by any means. Probably still worth picking up. Up to you, though. All right, if you would ignore Flying Dutchman's fart on the right, here we have Wholesome Skull Blaster. Now, this works in two ways. One, if the ore is on fire, it gives a times six multiplier, and the fire is put out. So it's essentially a Freon. That's a really good use. I really like that. However, if the ore is not on fire, it only gives a times four. Additionally, the multiplier is delayed by 15 to 20 seconds. Then the ore is multiplied by times three, equaling a total of times 12, and the ore becomes slippery. All right, here we have the Flying Dutchman. This is a pretty iconic item, and I felt like it was obviously 
pretty decent. Honestly, looking back, this is kind of something that balances right between bad and mid. It kind of varies on your situation. It might be decent in a low life or something. However, what this item does is it processes ore between 25 and 70, depending on your life. What is good is that it doesn't get weaker like Oasis does. The higher life you are, it actually gets stronger. So it's useful if you're like life one, you throw it in at the setup, it gives like a times 25, I believe. And then throughout the next however many lives, it ups its way up to times 70, while also being pretty small, which is decent. However, if every 30 minutes you get enough well upgraded ore, which is about 20 upgrade counter or more, go into the furnace, you get either a regular box or a lucky clover. So it's decent. Maybe good for emergency clovers, but ultimately nobody's going to be farming with this anymore, especially after the nerf of only being able to use three. Okay, next we have blood magic. This is definitely here because of rarity more than anything, uh, and it's definitely carried by its rarity. However, the item is still not entirely useless, so we'll go over it. All right, it's pretty simple. It processes ore at 20 times. However, for every hundredth ore, it does a 300 times multiplier and it duplicates the ore onto the staff and it puts it somewhere. And then if you can catch the ore and re process it, it gives it another 300 times multiplier. Ultimately, it's not terrible. It's just like, again, it's a really like niche item. You're gonna need to use it in certain situations and outside of those, it's useless and i don't even know if there's like much of a reason to use it in those situations there's probably something better okay honestly this item can probably go in bad tier if i'm being honest but it does have an item combo which will be in the honorable mentions at the end of the video that i'd like to include it for however the item itself is pretty meh it gives a 5 billion drop value for each ore and has multiple spouts However, the niche for the item is that it has a upgrade counter of negative 10.2. Alright, here you guys can see Goliath Skull. This is a two item set, however they're essentially the same item. Uh, they are a teleporter set and they are extremely large. That's the only reason it's not in good tier. It's a great item, but they're just massive. However, two things. Number one, the ore is set to red and number two... It gets a times 20 multiplier. So you're essentially getting a teleporter and a multiplier. But again, it's just not even like a high MPU scenario. They're absolutely massive. Like you, you could see that th this is truthfully a large item. All right, here we have the Spook Baron. Honestly, this item as like a concept is pretty bad. We did a lot of testing with it and it's not really great. However, it has one niche that makes it between both mid and good. So it kind of redeems itself. So the ore value for this is pretty weird, but it takes the ore value times number of inferno boxes you have plus one in case you have zero times the player's life times a 500 million dollars i don't know it's really weird and it's actually really bad in comparison to some of the others however the item has a really cool niche that it has three shields honestly there's better items just it's worth getting for the shield thing but honestly i can't imagine you using this in most situations all right here we have the haunted house this is actually probably one of my favorite items in the game not really sure why i just really love it honestly it's not the greatest thing ever it multiplies ore value by apparently times 8.71 which is pretty specific and that's pretty much it it's just a flat upgrade the only thing worth noting is that the speed of the conveyor is extremely fast and it makes it really nice to kind of use as a cannon for your way up highs it's not crazy good but it is decent. All right, here we have Cryptic Graveyard. This is one of the newer items, I believe. Something to know is that this is a very simple item. It's not really too crazy or hard to use. It just gives a times five and it makes the ore slightly more transparent. It's just okay. It's not really bad. It's just a little bit too large for most scenarios. But again, it's not really bad. It's okay. All right, ignore the gold crate, but this is Spectral Purgatory. This item, again, is pretty simple. It's just kind of not applicable in all situations. But all it does is it gives a time six, changes the ore color, and transparency. So it's essentially the same thing as the last item, just a little bit different and a higher upgrade. Again, it's just okay. 
All right, next we have Widow's Outpost. This is an item that could very much help with the Overseer as it requires granite, as this actually sets ores to a granite texture. Another thing to note though is that this also does apply poison, which isn't too great. Uh, but it also does give a times four. Also, if, if you're wondering why my hand is up, I'm, I'm just holding on to my mic arm because I, I don't know. The weird things I do while recording, guys. Like, I literally was just grabbing this and just holding on to it while I was talking. I don't know. So, hi, guys. All right, guys, this is Azurian Castle. It's actually a pretty good upgrader, except for one thing that I'm pretty sure causes problems with a lot of items, but I could be wrong, so I don't know. Either way, it's pretty good. All it does is it gives a times nine multiplier and it applies blue sparkles. The sparkles are the problem because I think there's a lot of items that don't work with sparkles. I don't know if those count, but... I just figured it at least was worth mentioning, and it does require that specific height to use. However, it does have a small hitbox, as you can see. All right, next up, we have the bad tier. All right, as someone who really likes Old Miner's Haven, this does sadden me a lot to say, but Hades Fang is really bad. The ore is only worth $10 million, which is really, really weak. You could only get one ore, and if the ore comes in contact with another ore, it upgrades that ore by 20%, and then it takes away the ore, like it deletes the ore, but takes its value. It's not really too good, however, it's really old, so I guess it's worth getting to just have, but I wouldn't stress over using this. Alright, here is the Spooklord 95,000. This item is not really great. It can be the best uh, in the game kind of, but like it's not for the right reason. The reason this item could be so strong is depending on the ore it drops, if it drops a white ore, it is worth a million dollars cash. However, it is multiplied by the amount of inferno boxes you have plus one and by the player's life. So kind of like nightmare, I believe. I think nightmare is stronger actually uh, because they both do the same thing as well as red ores are white ores or value times the side length of the ore so like it it can be better i don't i don't know it's just like a really niche thing it's just an old item get it because it's old don't get it because you want to use it all right guys this is the transylvanian refiner this is actually a pretty cool item but it's not really useful outside of like challenges however i'd maybe debatably put this in mid instead of bad but honestly i don't know you're just not going to be using this a lot so first of all, it is a way up high upgrader, meaning one problem is that you gotta get the ore up to it in the first place. Each side of the upgrade beam actually does a different multiplier. So they both do two and a half times, but they combine to a total of 6.25 times. The red one makes the ore more transparent, but the yellow one sets the ore on fire. If it wasn't for the fire, I think the upgrader would be better, but I mean, you have to put the fire out it's just eh. maybe if you used it at like the end of the way up high line it wouldn't be terrible but again it's just really specific use scenario it's not terrible i actually would maybe recommend getting it but i don't know all right next is hungry spirit i'm not gonna go over this entire items like thing because it's really complicated and it does take a while to explain but uh it does a few things where essentially it's multiplier can be really really high like a cell furnace depending on the upgrade counter of the ore which makes it work really well with nightmare go to the honorable mentions for more on that however there's other things that go into consideration like ore transparency fire stuff like that and ultimately it's just really complicated there's not it's just it's meh it's not good however if you're early game please pick this item up just like nightmare it is an incredible item for early game Again, go to the honorable mentions to see why. All right, guys, this is the next item, the Great Pumpkin. This item used to be really good at a point, kind of like 2018, 2019, but honestly, it's not really good anymore. And while I believe it has the potential to become good again, that's really not guaranteed. So honestly, if you're tight on candy and you're just looking for specifically good items, wouldn't get this. It does a times three, and depending on the items used before it, it gives an even higher multiplier. So like Pumpkin Hero and Pumpkin Patch will boost it by times two, up to what I believe is a times seven. 
And then you could get another times 10 added onto that for pairing it with a spook mine. So this is the spook demon 66,666. This item is pretty terrible. I think it's just a worse version of the other spook mines, if I'm correct. It gives a hundred million dollar ore value. And then what it'll do is it'll take your pumpkin boxes and your inferno boxes, add them together, and then uh, multiply the ore value by that. And then also multiply it again by your life. Again, it's pretty good for like ore value, but it's also just a worse version of the ones that exist. And the ghosts that are provided only double ore value. So again, it's just, it's not crazy. Like it's just like, it's an okay item. Okay, this is probably the literal worst item on the list. I'm not even kidding. This is probably the worst. So how this item works is you essentially take the seconds it has been since the last ore went into it, um, take that number of seconds, times it by 9 billion, and then add 20 billion to that multiplier. So you're really not getting a crazy multiplier, and the plus 20 billion doesn't really do much for you. Okay, uh, another item I'm not fully going to cover because it is a Schrodinger and there's a lot of RNG, but all I will sum it up to say is this is definitely not a good item. I can't really ever see myself using this. I don't even know many people who have ever used it. It's just not really forgiving and most of the upgrades it gives are only like a times two. It's it's just not good given the RNG. Not completely miserable, just not really worth it. Maybe get one, but like, I don't know. Okay, this is Putrid Farmyard. It's definitely one of the more simple items. The only problem I really have with it is one drawback. Actually, two. Number one, it's large, and number two, it gives the ore radioactive as a status effect. So, I don't know. I don't really like negative status effects. I'm pretty sure that's a negative status effect, so I don't really plan to use this ever. However, it does give a times four, which is okay. Lastly, we have one final upgrader. It's actually decent, other than it just being so extremely large. All I'll say is this item just does a times six that's really it there's no other like drawbacks or anything it's just really big i think it has a big beam as well so like it might be decent for some people but i don't know it's it's just way too big in my opinion so here is the tier list all kind of finally summarized before i get into the honorable mentions i just wanted to show this off so anyone could kind of go to this point in the video and just see all of this laid out for you that said let's get into some honorable mentions the first example i wanted to give was the nightmare x hungry spirit combo this is really good if you're early game this is just as it is this will work at any point in early game for you if you try this the reason this works is because remember nightmare has a negative 10.2 upgrade counter and Hungry Spirit does a lot of multiplier to items with a negative 10 or more or less uh, upgrade counter. So if I go to the wiki and I look at it right now, uh, ores with a less than or equal to negative 10 upgrade counter get a times 50 trillion multiplier. Honorable mention number two is I just wanted to kind of shout out blood magic It's a really rare item that hasn't really appeared too often in the game's history and Honestly, it has the potential to someday be really good, especially with any buffs But it's already a decent concept for an item. I just recommend it It's just an item specifically worth getting because of how rare it is and future proofing the same could also kind of be said for Great Pumpkin. It's just a good item stuck in the wrong sandbox, in my opinion. It's not terrible. It's just it's something that can be good someday again. And it was really, really good in 2019. I know I did already go over this point, but it had to be brought up again, is that Spook Baron does have three shields, and it makes it really, really, really good for getting just a little bit of extra oomph out of whatever like blaster loop you're doing and i don't know it's it's pretty cool another item that i'd like to include in the honorable mentions is eternal overseer as you can see right here i just figured that it's a really good item if you're willing to go through the process of setting it up and it is applicable to early game honestly it's not terrible it's just meh 
However, it does bring the item from mid to good, in my opinion, if you're willing to go through the hassle of setting up, and specifically more so for, like, early to mid game. But I don't know. I mean, I just wouldn't use this in end game. I could definitely see myself using this for an early game setup, however. Lastly, I just wanted to shout out these four specific items. I might be missing one, but I think I think it's just these. These are really rare old items from like 2016 and before. I didn't want to include the 2017 ones. These are particularly just worth getting entirely for their legacy slash rarity sense alone. And ultimately, I, I just I just couldn't leave that uh, not acknowledged. Alright guys, with that said, I think that is everything for the video. I couldn't think of anything else to include. I did include the Phantasm info for those items in the dock, but I'm going to cover that in a different video that I'll upload within this week as well. Either way though, I will see you guys soon. Have a happy Halloween if I don't see you again, and peace out. Bye bye